Indonesia or will it be Cambodia as we jump into the land of dawn for game number one. We're getting straight into it and already you see a lot of emphasis in the mid lane. Wave pressure is also a big factor, especially if you want to be uh, active in the early game. You want to get those pickoffs. It all starts with the lane. If you can push earlier, you can rotate faster and set up for those very interesting skirmishes. Ladies and gentlemen, to the first game of the upper bracket finals. It's been a short delay, but here we are. Finally, we are back into the game. Thanks for waiting, ladies and gentlemen. As we can see right now, both teams still being very, very aggressive and as predicted the mid lane there's just so much action here and side cuts wants a part of the action Whew. well we'll see once again again very sorry for the short delay there was reports of an earthquake here um, in Indonesia so we are gonna be resuming just again we were just making sure nothing was going on everything's all safe to go safety is number one priority exactly but now you can already see a very aggressive movement from the side of dreams gonna be taken down by Impunity, this roster from Cambodia. Team Cambodia strikes first in game number one with first blood. The Kadira, man, is just so, so dangerous. And the playmaking is just very subtle. The, the spells from this Kadira isn't exactly that flashy, so you really need to pay attention. Otherwise, Deja is going to have a great time here. And he is on that mid lane Kadira, so that's a lot more damage to think about. Here early on, you can already see as well that Brands is having a bit Tr of trouble here, even though he is actually utilizing that turret really well to get the favorable trade up against the 1-1. One, one. This matchup, though, I do want to talk a little bit about it. The turtle has spawned in Arashi, who has the lead here, who has the advantage. I think it's quite... I think it's quite balanced, but OP, uh, I mean, M Cambodia, they have a lot more tools to begin fights, so I think the Indonesians need to be very, very careful, and now it begins. Numenon Blast comes in, and that's going to be T taken down. The Petrify as well with the final blow as the backline will be targeted by Boom. Hijume with the Flicker to get out to safety, but that's the Retribution by Taz as he goes absolutely massive, dealing a whole lot of damage, picking up a kill as well. Boom, melted down, forced to Flicker out, and Indonesia comes back, secures the turtle, and two kills. I wish I can say I was surprised, but look at how oppressive this joy is. A lot of damage, a lot of survivability. At the end of the fight, Taz had almost half his HP bar of worth of shields. And that is something that in this early game, Cambodia cannot deal with. They, don't, they simply just don't have the items, the damage to deal with it. And this is why it's so annoying to have this joy on the opposing side. And they need to be more proactive here because if Indonesia are the ones engaging the fight, like now, you can see, it's just very, very dangerous, and they are risking getting picked off. The rhythm of joy and the electrifying beats, it does so much damage. It's nasty combo. Nasty combo, and on top of that, nasty mobility. He is untargetable, practically, when he is, when she is, using that rhythm of joy. But Five jumps, essentially, I think. Yeah, only five jumps. If you keep on resetting it, if you play with the rhythm as well, you deal more damage with the passive. But there is another pause, it seems, that is going to be initiated from... Cambodia right now as we will see what the game as the game has been resumed by Cambodia and Indonesia again three minutes in there is a 1,000 gold lead currently for Indonesia both teams are playing it relatively passive here as Taz jumps in once again with the rhythm of joy jumps in as well using the electrifying beats doesn't get the gold buff though that's a fancy beat actually that comes up when you use that ultimate but Taz is just all across the map, trying to get the gangs up, getting that farm as well. I think the mid game is where both teams have the resources to try and start just turning up the aggression and starting to attempt to at least snowball or maybe perhaps just get objective advantages because both teams have shown that they have that macro knowledge. And I think with that, that makes the team fights just that much trickier depending on what neutral objective is on the map. Good read by Brands here, as we mentioned. Strong side towards that gold lane for Cambodia. Taz again with the Rhythm of Joy just being such a nuisance. Lutu still able to get out on the Martis, anti-CC, but it is just going to be Indonesia who takes the turtle for free as Cambodia has opted to actually play around that gold lane. Opie finding a solo kill up against Brands. And T and Deja are waiting patiently for Taz to step in. He jumps in, gets caught in Divine Judgment, and that's the burst. We mentioned Arashi, the Petrify as well, but Taz is still able to survive. Jumps in with the Rhythm of Joy once, twice, three times, and that's the fourth with the Electrifying Beats dealing as much damage as possible. Deja gets taken out by Dreams. So much shielding 
For the joy, Arashi. Taz on the joy. Yes, there's a lot of shielding here, but even before that, in the initial CC lock, he was wow. able to survive from that without a vengeance. So that is very interesting. I really thought that it was over for him right there, but he was able to survive with a sliver of HP, and that is all you need on this hero. You need to seal the deal before there's any counterplay. Otherwise, it's an absolute disaster. And for Cambodia, now they're on the back foot for sure. Indonesia will try and use this lead, this control, and get those nasty pickouts of their own, or even a big combo, unless Cambodia can do something surprising, like the trap in the purple buff. It was a very great attempt. Six minutes in now, it's still a 1,000 gold lead. I feel like Cambodia, even though they've been behind, they've been losing a lot in these skirmishes, they're still keeping level head. They're really farming well and they're trying their best to minimize that gold lead. Meanwhile, Boom actually gets a solo kill on Psychot. Deja will fall as well. It's one for one as Taz is looking for an engage. It's the conceal by T to help his gold laner, OP, get to get out. Dreams, though, can be brought back for Divine Judgment. That's the shield coming up, and that's going to be OP. He was looking for all the shield. That's the crossbow tang popped up. It's going to be Dreams who gets taken down, but it's going to be traded back in as OP oh will God. fall to the hands of Brands. That's, again, Taz doing so much damage with the electrifying beats. Popping that sick beat, my man. On the sick beat, but losing the mid tower in the process. That is a very good rotation from Lutu. But you can see that the rotation game very much favors Indonesia. They're always one step ahead due to that wave clear advantage. But somehow, some way, Cambodia, they've been staying in their lanes and eventually they are having a turret advantage. Although now, Indonesia has a chance to actually use that time to go for the neutral objectives. Cambodia are so good at looking for these crazy pickoffs almost everywhere on the map. But they are opting again to put most of their resources to play around OP. 2-1-0 stat line currently. Still the same stat line as Brands, but again, they are already getting that push control around the top side river. Indonesia Ooh. rotating with a similar pattern towards that top side. Lutu trying his best to just open up the map, and both teams will not decide to go in just yet. Oh, they're going for the gold buff though, but it seems to be just a small trade going on, unless Dreams goes into the bush. Uh-oh, that's going to be Dreams. A lot of resources placed onto him. He soaks in every single damage from the crossbow with Tang, and that's going to be Taz caught very low. Still able to dash in with the Rhythm of Joy. That's Brands actually locking Lutu in place with his go away. Lutu finding the kill, but will fall as well to the hands of Taz, who picks up a double. Psychots now onto T, who has the Divine Judgment, will be able to pull him back into the turret. Now, Boom, with Ravis Fighter, is able to dish out some damage, but Psychots gets out with relative ease on that Benedetta. Cambodia is getting some kills on the board, but they're allowing Taz to start to snowball, man. He is 3-0 right now. He has that genius one, and he has built the Oracle very early on. It means less damage for him, but it also means that Deja as well as Tai cannot actually burst him down as reliably as they would like, and it's only going to get worse from here on out. He is already very tanky, and with the steel leg plates, that is some very efficient itemization to ensure that the damage from OP as well as Lutu and Boom can be mitigated as well. Here, again, Sheesh. it feels like Cambodia. <laughs> Sheesh! <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> my bad. It's okay. There was, there's <laughs> also a Colossus right there from Dream, so <laughs> both teams just having fun, right? Even though they're competing here in the upper bracket finals for the grand final spot, it's great to see that both teams are still enjoying their time in the Land of Dawn. Cambodia, though, however, are 3,000 gold behind of Indonesia. This will definitely impact their next few fights if they do decide to commit and fight, contest, instead of trading. Boom has already started his rotation down to that top side. Deja going to be able to catch Psychots with the Petrify. Suppression as well with Divine Judgment. Taz wreaking havoc with the Rhythm of Joy. That's the new non blast placed in as well. Popped in. T going to be caught, but it's only the Roamer taken down for the XP lane. Lutu and Boom still relatively untouched. He gets the stun onto two members, but the real world manipulation is still there. Taz again jumping, weaving everywhere. Has the electrifying beats, but will not choose to use it just yet. He'll choose to go for the Lord now. One for one, it still stands, but it's still Indonesia with more control. Indonesia has more control, and they are trying to use it to bait in more kills. Lutu goes in 1v3, but he will be forced to back away, and Indonesia is not risking any 50-50 in this retribution battle. They're waiting for the right moment, and they have a structure taken on the other side of the map just for good measure. Now, with Hijumi having a glowing wand, the poke damage is going to get 
very, very much worse for the side of Cambodia, and that will pressure them into making these reckless engages, and perhaps that will allow Indonesia to punish it even more. As you can see, Cambodia very intent on getting this Lord. Top lane, tier one, gonna be target T, looking for that Divine Judgment, but a perfectly placed go away is there. Taz, again with the Rhythm of Joy, soaking in so much damage, but will be caught in the Petrify. That's a shutdown over to Opie, who's going massive now. Has the crossbow tank, just one more weakness point onto Dreams. But OP gets poked back. Falling back now, Dreams is looking for it. Psychos with a Petrify onto two in the final blow. Finds OP. It's absolutely amazing for Psychos with the crossbow tank given over to OP, who's still able to convert it onto Dreams. Two members falling once again. Cambodia have risen again. It's a three for one. The 3 for one an absolute disaster for Indonesia. Taz got shut down by none other than Opi, and that's a huge gold swing as the Indonesians go in for another fight. Brands trying to do what he can here. He's going for the steal, but will not be able to find it. The go away and the win of nature popped in, but he's going to be petrified. And you can't win of nature. The damage from that Kadita magic penetrating through, and Brands taken off the board. That's a 2v5, essentially, for the Indonesians. Very, very reckless and it seems like they're losing control in this game right now. They certainly are not expecting the difficulty for Taz to actually take control of that game. We questioned if Cambodia has a solution, has something in the pocket. That is what they're showing right now. With the Lord pushing in, Cambodia goes for the jungle control as well, and the Indonesians are struggling to keep up. Taz, he needs to be a bit more disciplined with that rhythm of joy. Last time he jumped in and got caught in the Divine Judgment that led to Cambodia. Getting a good fight. Conceal play. T flickering forward. Not getting anyone, but that's going to be the joy. Targeted down. Taz out instantly now as Lutu is able to disengage. A good stun from Boom to once again help the rest of the members to back off. It's another one for zero, Rashi. And Cambodia, it feels like they're one step ahead. It seems like now that joy pick is actually harming the chances of Indonesia because Taz keeps going in and overestimating the flexibility, the power of this joy, and Cambodia is absolutely punishing it. If, we if they take it slow, Brands as well as Hijume has enough damage to start poking around, to pressure the members of Cambodia. There's a lot of physical defense being built, but Hijume with the glowing ones ready right now can actually poke them down before Taz goes in to secure those kills. So I think they have to be more synergized in how they want to approach these fights, because right now, it seems like it's very disconnected. We're seeing a lot of fights from Indonesia without the whole team, the five members, at the same time. Ooh. Cambodia. We questioned their decision not to ban the Joy, but right now, it's working to their favor. T opens up the map, forcing Dreams to back off. Indonesia zoned away from their own jungle as the orange buff will be claimed by Cambodia again. It feels so tough for Indonesia currently because Cambodia have such a good kite back composition. They can kite back, they can even engage now. And that's what we mentioned earlier, right? This pick style of composition that Cambodia opted to go for and kept on building towards, it really is looking super strong right now. Especially because early on, Indonesia has their own pressure. So Cambodia cannot synergize, cannot set up for these big ambushes. But now with the tides turned, with the gold lead in the hands of the Cambodians, they are all over the jungle of the Indonesians. The Magic Sentry will expose them for now, as Brands has picked up this Demon Hunter sword, allowing him to maybe be a bigger threat toward Taz, the tankier Taz? members. Ooh, that was such a risky move by Taz. Man, he dashed towards T on the Kaja. But he knows exactly what's going to happen there. He knows that T won't be in range after he uses the Rhythm of Joy. But it was just... It's pretty stressful to, for me to watch. Again, very aggressive moves. That's not quite necessary for Taz, so maybe this is just his character, his killer instinct, his mechanical skill wanting to be used, but now Psychos is being targeted. Uh-oh, Psychos gonna be caught. Doesn't get the eye for an eye, but he gets the Petrify. Now the final blow as well, caught. No crossbow tank used just yet. Indonesia decided to look for a trade here on the Lord. Look for the retribution. Taz gets it, but he's gonna be caught in there. Brands with a brilliant disengage. Crossbow tank still ready. Opie pops it in. Winner truncheon by Taz now. Caught in the midst of it all. Jumps in back and forth once again. Taz gets out. It's a good trade. Psychos traded in for the Lord for Indonesia to stay in this game. Wow, that mobility, man, is just so tough to deal with. Cambodia, with four members, were unable to get that pickup onto Taz. And now Hejume has built a winter truncheon as well, so the dive is just less effective. Uh-oh, Dreams caught Taz. Oh, he's so much damage. Taz is absolutely a monster here. He's still able to survive, buying so much time. 
and it's a one for zero. One for one here. Everybody's low, two for one. As that's a kill taken by Brands. Two members low from Cambodia. The Enhanced Lord marching top. And it does seem like we're gonna get a replay here, Arashi. What happened in this team fight? Cambodia going for the aggression, crowded around together, and the AoE coming in from Hijume is something that they are not taking into consideration. What? They get very, very low, but now another fight is breaking up in the bottom, you know, in the actual real game time. Hijume, apparently, a bit too aggressive, overstepping his boundaries there in the enemy jungle. But it's all good for Indonesia still. Even though they lost Hijume, they were able to find a few trades on the board. Tier 2 in the top lane, mid lane, and even in the bottom lane, equalizing the turrets here for themselves. But the Tier 2 hasn't fallen in that bottom lane just yet. I'm questioning a bit how the Winter Truncheon is the option that Hijume is building for. Because I think even if he does survive with the Winter Truncheon, that means that the whole roster of Cambodia will be on him when he gets out of it. I thought he would opt for something a bit more kite orientated, but now he has that double one combo along with the Divine Blade. That's more than enough damage, and he will be one of the main targets for the side of Cambodia. But keep in mind, Cambodia are just stacking up that magic resistance. Two Radiant Armors already built, Oracle for Boom as well. That will mean that the bulk of the damage will need to come from Brands and Psychots. We'll have to see, can that win condition be completed, achieved by the Indonesians? Well, they're already popping that Conceal Dreams, looking for the plays, opens up the map, T there. Doesn't choose to go for the Divine Judgment just yet. Deja gets out with the Odyssey, Ludu still soaking in a lot. Opie Psychos. trying his best to look for it. Psychots tries to cut the wave there, but it's not going to be able to happen. T gets a Divine Judgment, but Psychots once again is going to be able to jump in. What a nature popped in by Opie, who's going to be massive here. Has a lot of room to play with. Boom jumps in, Brands gets stunned, but has the win of nature. Opie still in the back line, still hitting. Has it having the crossbow tank. Will try his best to look for all the weakness points, but it's going to be reset. Once again, as Taz finds the shutdown onto Lutu. Cambodia on the back foot. Two members alive for Indonesia. It's just Psychos who gets taken down. OP once again trying to make the miracle play happen as he looks for the crossbow. Tiny finds it. Dreams gonna be taken down. Taz as well. But a winner's question is there for Taz. Do not last. But OP is still kiting, still saving Cambodia from getting the amazing, amazing defense. Boom, now chasing for a kill. Real Red is being popped, but the OP will be there to zone them all away. And this is the story of the game right now. If Indonesia can get pick of their own, they have an advantage. Let's take a look at that replay once again. Cambodia going in aggressively, but then being counter-engaged. And Psychots and Taz diving towards the back line. Zones OP, everyone man. away until Boom comes in and OP realizes there's a chance here. He goes back in for the outplay, gets that crossbow of Tang, and that is how dangerous Cambodia is even on the back foot. Oh my god, that was a 2v4, and OP continues to surprise us from last 2021 MSC to now. They're able to find the Lord because of that play, that defense that went so well for them. They punished Indonesia all on the back of OP in the late game. Even up against Dreams, when he popped that shield, he was able to maneuver away behind the shield. This is why this composition is so dangerous. Every single member, every single hero on the side of Cambodia can make the plays happen. Whereas for Indonesia, it's about unity. It's about synergy, playing as five, because otherwise, alone, the Yeev, the Lolita, the Melissa, they cannot make these plays happen alone. Even Taz right now is being completely countered. They need to play around each other and get that united team fight to get that victory. 18 minutes in, this is still an Enhanced Lord dump that Cambodia took. They couldn't risk waiting for that 18 minute mark for the Evolved Lord to spawn. Stem now trying their best to micromanage the waves. Taz, very risky play again, walking in front of that Kaja. T's been absolutely solid with his Divine Judgments. Both right. teams are opting to play it still very slow, building those waves up for Cambodia to crash and siege. And to mention, he has the flicker, so beware of that flicker divine judgment combo. But here we go, Cambodia sieging away, and look at T. T looking for it now, gonna get stunned up, not able to find a divine judgment. That's the petrify onto one member. Deja is the only one caught there. The real world inflation instantly cancelled out. 
and Indonesia opts to clear out the Enhanced Lord first. Bottom lane gonna be targeted here. That's gonna be an amazing, amazing winner. Trunchen by Hijime to escape from the Divine Judgment threat. Lumina Blast now onto one member. It was dodged away by Lutu and Boom, who's now caught in the base. Immortality still available. One for zero right now for Cambodia. Boom, getting out. Taz jumping in, looking for some damage. Not able to connect on the second Rhythm of Joy. And Cambodia will try their best to look for another push. Hijime has the Holy Crystal, so that's a lot of damage. He is the main wave tier 2 right now, but Cyclops goes in. Final blow used up. Deja gonna be caught there, but still is able to run away with the Oddity. Cyclops gonna be taken down. The crossbow tank, massive. Opi is absolutely overpowered. The real world manipulation and desperation. Boom, gonna be caught. Immortality's popped in. Lutu looks for the base, and Cambodia gets the first game in the series. Another massive victory for Cambodia. We said Joy was OP, we said the team that has Joy will win the game for sure. Cambodia says no, that is not the case at all. We have